Hi folks, hope you're okay. Today's gonna be it's good to be with you. Uh, we're gonna look at contradictions in the Quran. Uh, my website is jasonburnspreacher.com. You can get me on Facebook and Twitter. It's good to be with you. And we're gonna look at the Quran and see if there are any contradictions in the Quran. And one of my sources here is the contradictions in the Quran by Matt Slick. So you can uh, get one of the papers that I'm using. Um, by Matt Slick, okay, and um, and you can also type in uh, contradictions and inconsistencies of the Quran and Hadith, and that will result in a paper that I'm using as well. So these are my sources. So let's go. Are there contradictions in the Quran? What was man created from? Blood, clay, or dust, or nothing? Uh, created out of the clot of congealed blood in chapter 96 verse 2 Surah 96 verse 2 uh, in Surah 1526 man was created from sounding clay from mud molded into shape in uh, Surah 359 he was created from dust man was created from dust and then in Surah 1967, we created him before out of nothing. So here are four different views about man's creation. One, he was created for kinjil blood. Then it was clay. Then he was created from dust. And then he was created from nothing. So, And then it goes, he was created man from a sperm drop. Behold, this same man becomes an open disputer. 16.4. Surah 16.4. So here we have five different views on the creation of man. From semen, from blood, from dust, from nothing, etc. So there's contradiction there. Is there or is there not compulsion in Islam? Surah 2, 256. Let there be no compulsion in religion. Surah 9, 3. An announcement from Allah and his messenger to the people a seven, etc. And proclaim a grievous penalty to those who reject the faith. Surah 9 5. Fight and slay the pagans wherever you find them, seize them, lie in wait for them in every stratagem of war, and if they repent and establish regular prayers and practice regular charity, then open the way for them. Surah 9 5. So there seems to be a compulsion in Islam. Fight those who believe not in Allah, Surah 9, 29. The first Muslim was Muhammad, Abraham or Jacob or Moses. And I, Muhammad, am commanded to be the first of those who bow to Allah in Islam, 39, 12, Surah 39, 12. Surah 7, 147. When Moses came to the place appointed by us, when he recovered his senses, he said, Glory be to thee, I turn in repentance. I am the first to believe. Surah 7, 147. And this was the legacy that Abraham left two sons, and so did Jacob. O oh, my sons, Allah had chosen the faith of you, then die not except in the faith of Islam. Surah 2, 132. So you've got confused verses there. Was Abraham the first? Was Moses? Was was Muhammad the first Muslim? <clears throat> Does Allah forgive or not forgive those who worship false gods? Surah four forty eight. Allah forgive not the partners should be set up with him. Surah four one five three. We forgave them. Are Allah's decrees changed or not? There is not none that can alter the words and decrees of Allah, Surah 6.34. None can change his word, Surah 6.115. None of our revelations do we abrogate or cause to be, be forgotten, but we substitute, some, substitute something better or similar, Surah 2.106. When we substitute one revelation for another, Surah 6.101, so he says... God's word cannot change, God doesn't change his mind, but then he's changing his mind. Was Pharaoh killed or not killed by drowning? 
Surah 10, 90, 92, Pharaoh, he said, I believe that there is no God except him whom the children of Israel believe in. I am those who submit to Allah in Islam. It was said to him, etc. This day shall we save thee in body that thou mayest be assigned to those who come after thee. Surah 10, 90, 92. Moses said, O Pharaoh, we did drown him and all who were with him. Surah 17, 102, 103. Is wine consumption good or bad? Or you believe in intoxicants and gambling, etc. Surah 590. It was a parable of the garden which the righteous are promised. In it are rivers of water and rivers of wine. Surah 4715. So, in Matt Slick's contradictions there, there's some very clear contradictions. Uh, Wine's intoxicating, yet when we get to heaven we're going to be drinking loads of wine. So we're going to just go into... I mean, this is a paper of all the many, many contradictions of the Quran in here. So, we'll just read a couple from here. The length of day, Surah 2247. As surely as a day with your Lord is a thousand years of your counting. This passage contradicts Surah 74. To him the angel and the spirit mount up in a day where the measure is 50,000 years. I Ibn Abbas considered the premier Islamic interpreter was incapable of reconciling these passages together. Abu Ubun said, A certain man asked Ibn Abbas about the, a day whose measure was 50,000 years, to which he answered, They are two days which Allah has mentioned in his book. Allah alone knows what they are. I do not know what they are. I am afraid to say about them that which is not according to my knowledge. And we've got other hadiths to, to back that up. The Day of Judgment. The Quran indicates that human beings will be questioned on the Day of Reckoning. So we shall question those to whom messages were sent, and we shall question envoys. Surah 7, 6 and halt them to be questioned, Surah 37, 24. Yet, in Surah 55, 39, contradicts these passages, on that day none will be questioned about his sin, neither man or jinn. Creation of heaven and earth. In Surah 41, 9 and 12, say it is that, it is that ye deny him who created the earth in two days, and bestowed things on the earth, and measured them, there in all things to give them nourishment in due proportion in four days. Moreover, he com comprehended in his design the sky as it had been smoke, and he said to it and to the earth, Come ye together willingly or unwillingly. So he completed them as seven firmaments in two days. These verses imply that God completed the heaven and the earth in eight days, two plus four plus two, and that the heavens are fashioned after the earth. Yet other passages suggest that the heavens were created before the earth, and that it took six, not eight days to complete their formation. Why are you the more difficult to create or the heaven above? God hath constructed it on high. He raised its canopy and he hath given it order and perfection. And the earth, moreover, he hath extended to a wide expanse. Surah 79, 27, 28 to 30. Your guardian Lord God who created the heavens and the earth in six days. Surah 7, 51. Verily, your Lord is God who created the heaven and the earth in six days. Surah 10, 3. So is it six or ten? Uh, so is it six days or eight days that the Quran uh, is, uh, contradicts itself? Now, I know that Muslim apologists uh, have come back in answers to these, but the plain reading of the Quran in honesty shows there are contradictions here. Noah's family and the flood. According to Surah 21, 6, Noah and his family were saved from the flood. Remember Noah when he cried to us after time, we listened to his prayer and delivered him and his family from great distress. Surah 21, 76, And Noah verily prayed unto us, and gracious was the hearer of his prayer, and we saved him and his household from the great distress and made his seed the survivors. Yet in Surah 11, 42, 43, 66 and 10, 
We are told that Noah's wife and one of his sons did not survive. And I've got, we've got references of hadiths as well that we can read and, and also of people like Yusuf Ali translation. He tries to explain. Evidently, his Noah contemporary would have been so corrupt that it needed a great flood to purge it. None of thy people will believe except those who believe it already so grieve no longer over their deeds. But there were evil ones in his own family. A foolish and useful, undutiful son is mentioned. Poor Noah tried to save him and pray for him as one of his family, but the answer came, he is not of the family for his conduct is unrighteous. So Yusuf Ali tries to get out of this contradiction. And then finally, I, I've got many contradictions here. I've got pages and pages in the Quran, but we'll just go one more. Surah 56, 11, 14 state that few of the later believers will enter paradise. Those are they who will be brought nigh in gardens of delight, a multitude of those old and a few of those of later time. This is contradicted by 30. 9 and 40, a multitude, a multitude of those of old and a multitude of those of later time. And if you wanted to look at, look at the position of the Jews and Christians in the Quran, and there's so many contradictions what the Quran teaches about that. So I won't go into any more. You've, you can go and read the paper by Matt Slick. Uh, contradictions in the Quran and you can also read the full paper uh, contradictions and inconsistencies in, in the Quran and Hadith and I'll put a, a, a PDF link to these um, papers and you can go and read them but I'll, I'll do that next week I just haven't got the time to uh, Google the papers but next week I'll put a link to the PDFs and you can go and read them um, or just type in the title uh, contradictions and inconsistencies of the Quran and Hadith and you find the paper and uh, contradictions in the Quran by Matt Slick okay so that if you study the Quran there are loads of contradictions if you go onto the YouTube channel uh, if you go yeah if you go onto the YouTube channel Act 17 with David Wood he'll show you lots of contradictions in the Quran if you go on Answering Islam website, you'll see loads of papers showing contradictions in the Quran. And if you go on to Answering Muslims, you'll see loads of contradictions in the Quran there. So you'll, you'll see lots of material that will really, really help you. Uh, so I hope that's been a help. And uh, I, I make this video to challenge the Muslims out there, to challenge you to look at your Quran, to see if there are contradictions in the Quran. But also to encourage people to not go the way of Islam uh, and to encourage you to think about Christianity, to think about Jesus Christ. And uh, i just read a, a verse. Uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 says Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius Galatia and Cappadocia and Asia and Bithynia elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ grace unto you and peace be multiplied blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, to inheritance, an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. And, you know, Christ died on a cross, and if you've done anything wrong, if you've failed in any way, and you know you're guilty before God, when Jesus died on that cross, he took the punishment for your sin. The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin so when christ died on that cross he's dying as your substitute to bring you home so that you can be reconciled to god and 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 know peace before god 
and, and not live in fear, you know, fear of hell and fear of judgment, to know that you're forgiven and to know that you're cleansed and to know that you're washed in the blood of Jesus. You know, it's a wonderful thing. And you can have that today as a Muslim. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And he'll give rest for your soul and he'll give peace as you believe him and trust him as your Lord and Savior. And you're invited today as a Muslim to come and believe and trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He who loved you and died for you. I'd encourage you as a, as a Muslim today, go and read the book of Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah and meditate on that book and pray over that book. And ask the Lord to speak to you through that book. There's over 60 odd chapters. But read that book, the book of Isaiah. And pray and ask God to speak to you through that book. And you'll be amazed as it reveals to you about the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ, who would be your saviour and die for you. May God bless you.